Good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I hope you had a fabulous weekend. I did too. How are you, Jeannie? Well, the rain came down, down and, and came down, down, and so down. hopefully we're going to be able to start bathing again. I know. So, yeah. I so it was a great weekend. <laughs> it's the start of a new week and a new month, and today we bring you two top South African TV talents on one show. Duduzi Mabaso is a two-time SAFTA winning actor, and he recently starred in the critically acclaimed local western Five Fingers for Marseille. Oh, I'm dying to watch that movie. Yes. I still haven't gone, but it's absolutely, it's apparently amazing. Now, he's also starred in a number of local productions, including Zone 14 and Yizo Yizo. Head over to our social media platforms and let us know which of his roles is your favourite. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. We also sit down with actress Pele Lemzimela, who's best known by her on-screen nickname, Kentucky. She mm. shares the story of how a small-town girl from KZN made it onto one of the country's mm. most popular soapies. Plus in the kitchen today we are joined by Chef Martin Cobalt who is a brand ambassador for McDonald's Food SA and for an Afternoon Express exclusive he is going to show us how to make one of their most popular breakfast menu items. And our first guest, Mdudusi Mabaso, has appeared in a number of international films that were shot in South Africa, including Blood Diamond, Hotel Rwanda, Catch a Fire. On local screens, has starred in Yizo Yizo, Zone 14, and a place called Home. Yeah, most recently he portrayed the stern police chief, Luyanda, in the critically acclaimed South African Western Five Fingers for Marseille. Hello, good lady, Terry. Yeah, what's on? I did not want to go. <laughs> yeah, some what? serious bad boy testosterone in that film, hey? I know, it got me quite excited. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. What was it like working on Five Fingers for Marseille? Thank you for having me, firstly. Uh, working in that movie, it was quite a thing, because most of the time when we were young, we're looking at these guys as uh, our role models. Because we didn't know. We didn't know, we didn't know what they were like uh, Western. Yeah. We knew I'm a cowboy at the time because you're young. But then uh, I had the dream one day, which mm. I want to be part of one of the cowboy movies, which is called Western Love. Yeah. So it, it was quite a, a good thing to be in that picture. Yeah. Yeah. We heard that That's filming beautiful. conditions were quite intense because um, it was raining all the time and it was quite cold. So we heard that because of that vibe, it actually got more aggression out on set that everybody gave better performances. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the area that we're in, it was quite cold. There was snow all the time, so uh, it and forces it's hard you. Terrain. Yeah, it yeah. was raining. It forces you to be in the character, and the set. It was so beautiful. Wow. Yeah, it, it just pushes you to be in it. What do you love most about your character? Uh, I don't like anything. You don't. You like that one. A bad guy. Do you judge no, your he's characters? a bad guy. That guy, man. You, but do you most judge of your characters. Uh, I 
won't say I'll judge my characters, but then, you know, sometimes when you're being typecast as a person, you end up thinking, I, I have to just, okay, play the character sometimes. But the thing was, uh, I'm a character, I do not say I, would ju I judge them. Yeah, yeah. I'm called, I'm told, this is the character we want you to play. So I play it the way they want it. Now, how do you get into it? Because you've often played, like, bad guys and gangsters and the rest of it. But now, like, I know Johnny Depp and all of them are method actors and they've really, they go deep into their characters. So what is your preparation like to get into your character? And equally, when you finish a film, how do you get out of that? How do you release that character from you? You know, I always answer this question in this way. Uh... And I feel like it's pompous, actually, to answer that way. But then it's something that I believe in. Mm -hmm. For yeah. me, this is a calling. Mm. So obviously, if it's a calling, you're given this thing by God. This is a talent. Mm. So he prepares first. Yeah. Then I come and work. Yeah. And things happen. There's nothing that I will say, I'm going and go and check and research for something. So I just do the thing that needs to be done at that time. Yeah. And it happens. Because for me, it's a calling. So yeah. if I say, God, please help. Mm. Now I'm in. Let's do it. So how, it happens. How do we get South Africans to watch South African films? How do we get them out? Because it's, it's not like South Africans don't go to the movies. It's not mm. like they can't afford to mm. go to the movies. How do we get them on the seats watching local talent and local productions? I think sometimes we need to take the, the productions to the people, where the people are. Because most of the people, they don't have that money to go to the cinemas, especially these young kids who are growing, who are starting to like this thing, I'm feeling. So we just need to take everything to them. Not mm -hmm. always call them to go to the Santino Rose Banks. You, we need to make uh, a cinema in the township mm -hmm. so that people can be able to go there. There was uh, a cinema, Alexander, called Kins. Uh, it's no longer working uh, by user for Amazon. So I think we need to capitalize on that, using those spaces and taking the movie to the people. Wow. Now, mm. you've been playing Suffocate on Rhythm City for quite some time now. Yeah. And uh, what have you, what, how have you seen the character evolve and has it become something you never expected or are you taking it in a particular direction? Uh, suffocate, man. <laughs> suffocate, you <laughs> are. And you know why I'm saying with you Suffocate? Suffocate has been diluted so much. And not even with water, but then with mud. He's not the guy that I, has, uh, I, was, I was playing, Makala Irrhythm City. He, he has changed to be something else. And for me, now, to be honest, I'm playing the character uh, to get paid. To work. No, I'm serious. I'm being honest. <laughs> I love uh, you. I really hope your producer's I'm not being watching on... this interview. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, I think I've, I've said that before. Uh, we, we need to change some few things in this character. I love honesty. In yeah. this character. So mm. yeah, I, I'm playing it, but then I feel like I'm not doing justice to the character. Because you're tired of uh, him? Or? I'm not tired of him. Or yeah. well, you just don't believe in who he's I becoming? I don't believe uh, in suffocate mm. uh, characteristics that he has grown over my I don't understand him anymore. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, earlier you were saying that you've got a calling. Now, I've also got a particular calling in life, and I believe it's to marry Leonardo DiCaprio. So on that note, I love the work that you did on Blood Diamond. Yeah. What was, what, I mean, is there a difference working on really good local productions versus international ones? No, it's fine. For me, it's the same, because I treat actors mm. the same. Mm. Uh, there's no one who would be like bigger than the other because we're in the same industry. So if you are from overseas, yeah. you're just or an relative. actor for me. Yeah. I'm not starstruck by anything. Mm. So it, it was the same. It was mm. the same for me. Yeah. Yeah. You have a very refreshing honesty. And it's an, it's an honesty that um, allows one to actually be a better actor. I do believe mm. that. But mm. it's an honesty that a lot of people in the industry shy away from because you're always supposed to look like you're having a good time, everything's perfect, and it's all just dandy. The thing I don't lie. Yeah. I can't lie. I'm a bad liar. Uh, ish. You know, things that are happening with industry, your Nigeria as a whole. Uh, most of the actors, they are not happy. Mm. They are doing things which they don't like, but then they can't talk. So if you talk most of the time, uh, I think they are scared 
that they are going You're to lose, lose their jobs. You are a troublemaker. So I, I talk. Unfortunately, that's me, and I cannot hide it. It's refreshing. Yeah. yeah. And it's a quality that also you know, as, b contributes to a really happy relationship. I think your wife is your biggest fan. I mm. mean, on social media, the two of you are constantly praising each other. Yeah. And you've been married for a long time. What is the secret to, you know, holding together such a happy marriage? Uh, it's, it's respect. And parenthood, mm. yeah. It's respect, understanding each other all the time. Communication is key. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Just respect, understand each other. Yeah, Communication, it's yeah, it's key. Yeah, and you've got a great life, and you look like you're a really good father as well. Thank absolutely. you so much. Absolutely, I appreciate it. I, I think I, 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 I understood love when I met, the, I met this woman. Aww. I never knew love. I yeah. was married for the past uh, 13 years. Then I got, I got divorced. Then I got her. It's been 10 years. I'm happy. Yeah. That's really beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there is hope. <laughs> <laughs> of the many roles Mduduzi has played, which is your favorite one? Tweet us and tell us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page, please. After the break, we head to the kitchen for an Afternoon Express exclusive consulting partner on menu development for McDonald's South Africa. Chef Martin Kobold gives us an inside look at how, make, how they make one of their breakfast staples. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, I don't know about you, but I love breakfast. And I particularly love breakfast for lunch. And I can have breakfast for dinner, too. And if you love McDonald's, then you'll definitely know and love the classic Egg McMuffin. And we're going to get a taste of how it's made. And I'm joined now by renowned chef and McDonald's food endorsement chef, Martin Cobalt. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, I often find myself at a McDonald's, but it's usually between 2 and 3 in the morning. <laughs> but their breakfast is fantastic. Absolutely. I'm glad to hear that you're like a breakfast girl 24-7, which no, is No, well, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Correct, 100%. So you are now the vice president of the World Chefs. That's correct, What does yes. that even mean? What, like, uh, that's, you can cook. Uh, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> I, I'm not just stressing funny. I do cook as well sometimes. <laughs> no, it's, a, uh, it, it's basically it's, it's a world body. Mm -hmm. of, of all the chefs association of federations around the yeah. world. We're currently representing 118 countries and representing over 10 million chefs around the world. So Amazing. it's a big one, yes. Now, why did you decide to join with McDonald's and what do you do for them? Um, well, this wasn't really a decision. I was approached by them and uh, first I was a little bit reluctant because, you know, McDonald's, fast food or whatever. But then I, I started some, some, some research and I went to all the different suppliers with them and uh, I found out this is actually uh, absolutely amazing what they do. It's first grade ingredients. Really? It's, uh, you know, their statement of being 100% beef. It is truly 100% beef. Okay. And that sort of convinced me. It, was, it wasn't much convincing to be done by them. It literally for myself is saying, yes, I'm wow. going to do it. And is everything locally sourced? So if I'm eating a tomato in my burger, is that from absolutely, South Africa? Absolutely, absolutely. Everything, whatever you see, whatever you see in a menu, at McDonald's is all locally sourced and all beautiful ingredients. But then how do they get it to taste the same throughout the world? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's the recipes are all done like globally it's, and then yeah. we, we, we endorse the recipes. So like there's a, there's a global menu which is like the Big yeah. Macs and stuff which is globally everywhere the same. So yeah. we, we, we work exactly to the recipes with global recipes but there's obviously the local products like we got the Buri breakfast as well which I'm sure you've had before as well. And the Egg McMuffin, you know, it's also one of those global ones which we're just trying to define a little bit in South Africa, yeah. you know. Well, we don't have any Buri for breakfast here but we've got our Mac, Mac, Mac muffins. Absolutely. Should, can you teach me how to make a McDonald's McMuffin? Well, it's very, very difficult. Yeah. Very, very difficult. You know? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> they, they're not, that that cancels me out of the kitchen. No, no, no. <laughs> it's actually, it's, 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 it's a beautiful uh, English muffin, mm -hmm. which we just uh, cut in half. We toast yeah. it, okay, and we butter it on the one side. And mm -hmm. it's it's fairly simple. So obviously this is going to be warm. Unfortunately, I don't have the, the proper specialized yeah. equipment we have in all the stores. But we got the, 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 the muffin, the English muffin. We're just going to put slice of cheese on there, yeah. okay? Then on top goes the hot fried I'm egg. I'm always so envious of how they get these eggs so perfectly it's round. It's a beautiful mold. It's a beautiful mold which we then cook on. It's like a called a glam shell, great mm. glam shell grill, and it just goes gets cooked and it's like it's 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 like a poached egg really. Okay. So it's a special mechanism. A bit of water goes in there. It's really really beautiful. Beautiful. And then of course we got the the chicken roll which goes yeah. on top there. Amazing. Voila. voila. So everything's hot, the cheese will be melting down beautifully, and it's very convenient. So, you know, they, we pack it like in a, in a, in a, in a beautiful uh, uh, in a wrapping, which is obviously also 100% yeah. uh, environmentally friendly. And also, it's so easy to eat in the car on the go. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. So this is the world famous Egg McMuffin. Okay, so I'm going to assemble mine now. Because there you know go. what? I actually did work at McDonald's at one point. I worked there for one afternoon for a charity, and I was operating the drive through Oh, yeah? They didn't let me into the kitchen. <laughs> so the drive through was the safest place to yep. have me. Okay, let's see Perfect. if I listen clearly. Wrong. Wrong, that, that one. one. That side, yes. Okay, oh, is it important which side your yes, bread is there's the it? heel, there's the heel and there's the crown. And this this being the, oh, you actually were right, sorry. No, you're actually not. There we go. <laughs> no. there's, there's the heel, okay. okay, and that's the crown. That's the thing okay. that goes on top. Well, so you're perfect Well, in like that case, if this is the crown. <laughs> that's the crown. Okay, so then I'm going to have my eggy yep. placed over there. Okay, then my the chicken roll. chicken roll. And, and it's always the crown on top. And then the crown on top. Fantastic. Wonderful. I think you should taste one. <laughs> Since you claimed you're that breakfast lady, you know. No, I, I know, this is fabulous. One. I'm going to try and wrap it as well. Yeah. And then I'm going to, yeah, these ones are warm. I'm going to take one yeah. of these. Take one of these. Oh, one. Oh, thank That's you for bringing me, Brittany. And of it's course, pleasure. this is halal as well. Absolutely, 100% halal. All nice. our ingredients are 100% halal. Mmm, yummy. That's not I want to see that facial expression now, like this melting down of goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah, trust me, this is going to create a lot of happiness in my face. Oh, fantastic. That's not all from Chef Martin, because a little later we'll be taste testing the newest item on McDonald's menu, the delicious breakfast wrap meal.
Should Aren't I? Aren't you going to grab have yourself to one as well? I think so as well. Mmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Love it. I'm loving it. Mm. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> wow, that looks so delicious. I love that. Anywhere you go in the world, the Egg McMuffin will taste exactly the same. So stay right where you are because we've got one more, more, more cooking to come on the show. After the break, Abigail Donnelly from Taste Magazine is here to make five delicious ingredient peanut butter cookies. Plus, we meet our second celeb guest for the day, actress Pele Limzimela. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. What a great way to start the week because the best things in life are often the simplest, especially when it comes to sweet treats. Today, Abigail teaches us how to prepare five ingredient peanut butter cookies, which she promises are simple and yet oh so delicious. Oh, really you delicious. are starting my week off. <laughs> Good, Abigail. I love peanut butter and I mean, it's not a protein. It's great. And it's Tasty. It's easy. It's great for the kids today. It's school holidays. Yeah. So they can make a whole batch of them. Yeah. I can't and wait to have kids so that they can make me cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make your cookies. It's fine in the meantime. So we've got some a uh, cup of smooth peanut butter. You could use crunchy as well. Good yeah. quality. And half a cup of sugar. Sure. I'm using brown. It seems to be better, but you can use white, <laughs> and I try not to go all over the place with this. But yeah. you don't need a mix, you could actually just use a wooden spoon. Okay. Which we'll probably do, because I don't want to splash this all. And then one beautiful free-range egg. Sure. So as you notice, those are three ingredients. So sugar, sugar peanut butter, peanut egg. butter egg. I'm loving that this is so simple, because these are ingredients that you'll always have in your cupboard. Exactly. And have you noticed? No flour. Oh, so that's they gluten the secret. Free, they gluten free. Yes. <laughs> well, that okay. seems to be the buzzword, but I and mean, I, I don't even know what gluten free means. Beautiful milk <laughs> chocolate. Yes, more Chip cookies. You can more. <laughs> you gotta get the. Can't be a flop though. No. So not the whole packet. Okay. And if you don't have these, you could grate in some chocolate as well. Okay. Whatever you've got in your pantry, even some vermicelli. You know those. I don't have any sprinkles. chocolate in my okay. pantry. Yeah, it doesn't eat it last all. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just give that a quick mix. Okay. Because what we need is a nice thick um, 
better. Delicious. Good. Okay. I'm not going to ask you to make the balls because you've got nice. No, pretty I can do it for hands. you. I've just do you washed want to my do hands because I've been cooking. Okay. Breaky. It's probably best to dampen your hands because it's a little sticky dough. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. And as someone well, has beautifully you done that already, uh -huh. um, we've got little balls. Beautiful. There. Give it a little bit of space. You can do it on baking paper. And why paper. round? Do they end up flattening? Yes, I'm going to when do. You bake them. Oh, look at these messy. Yes, I should haven't really mixed this up really the right way. No, it's great because then it won't be a chunkier cookie. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. These That's will be nice. nice and smooth. And then just with the back of the fork, if you want to, no, I'm just going to say dip it in flour because that is the trick when you do that, so it doesn't stick yeah. when you make cookies. And then just Perfect. give it. Okay, just, but now just to give it a little yeah. bit, yeah. Can you see what's happening? Oh, do you these push are them better. Down. Yeah. You don't leave them. But just give well. them space because okay. they do spread a little bit, but they kind of stay big. And th I mean, you can make big ones too. Yeah. I mean, really like it. Like the New York like, cookies. Yes, those exactly. Are the best. Okay, so those go into the oven, 180 degrees for about yeah. 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Um, until That's they're amazing. nice and golden brown. I mean, they're already golden brown, but a little bit. And more. I actually figured out why it's the five ingredient cookies where we've actually only got four ingredients here exactly. because it was the eggs, the uh, sugar, the peanut butter, and the now, chocolate, and now... So when I was thinking dun. about it, I mean, this is the five ingredient challenge. So you can't have we need to cookies. Dunk. We need to there dunk. There we go. There we go. for you. Thank you. With you can't have hands. a good cookie unless you're going to give it a good dunk. Okay. And that's Abigail, the fifth this is ingredient. Amazing. For this incredible <laughs> recipe, all you need to do is SMS the keyword EAT to 33650. We'll send you all the info you need. And um, what do you think? I'll let you Doesn't know. Doesn't even need a dunk. Mmm. That is great. That is fantastic. So it could be mm. three ingredients. If you lift out the chunks, <laughs> lift out the, the hot chocolate, Love sugar, it. eggs, mm. and peanut butter. I've just had breakfast and now I've had dessert <laughs> as well. <laughs> throw, the, throw the biscuit. <laughs> Now, if you are enjoying watching Baxter and Donut growing up, don't forget you can also follow them on Instagram. Yes, they have their own Instagram accounts. Head over to Instagram and search the adventures of Donut and the adventures of Baxter for a different look into their on and off screen lives with help from our friends at Whiskers and Pedigree. They're cute, they're cuddly, and they're TV stars. Baxter and Donut, the adorably fluffy four-legged members of the Afternoon Express family, are sharing their daily adventures on social media. To see what Baxter and Donut get up to behind the scenes, follow the adventures of Baxter and the adventures of Donut on Instagram. Now, a small town girl at heart, Pelele Mzimela was born in Gingindlovu, Guazulu Natal. From the age of nine, she wanted to become a TV presenter, and when she finished school, she followed her passion. After completing a degree in TV production at AFTA in 2015, she very soon landed the role of Lifetime on one of South Africa's best-loved soapies, a role that has earned her the nickname Kentucky. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Do you, what was your audition like for Kentucky? It was pretty simple. I just went in there with the script and I went for it. I knew it was only that one time so I just yeah. gave it all I had. How did you prepare for it because that's and I always find the preparation to auditions quite an interesting journey for everyone were you nervous or did you feel like do you know what I can do this I can settle in and just cut straight to it? Um, how did I prepare for it? I I really didn't prepare for it <laughs> because I'm a trained actress. Before I went, before I studied film, I, st I actually studied drama. So oh, I, I prepared the best way I knew how, which is to wear black at an audition, which is your hair must be a certain way, you must speak a certain way, and that's just how I prepared it, and I, I went for it. Okay, I yeah. was wondering if you had studied drama because I know that you wanted to become a TV presenter and then went yes. to after, and I was thinking that's quite... A, like I always wanted to be an actress and I yeah. ended up being a TV <laughs> presenter. Yeah. So I was wondering what your story, what your journey was like um, then. First, I, I went to UJ and then I failed dismally at UJ. Yeah. And then after that, I told my dad that I actually wanted to, to study this type of thing. And then he said, well, he wasn't sure about taking me to that school because it was so expensive. So what, he after? wanted, yes. Okay. So he said I should go to DUT first and then to check whether I'm serious or not. And then he would take me to that school. That was yeah. my dream school. So that's how I ended up going to DUT and then I went to AFTA. Wow. wow. Yeah. What kind of, I mean, I always, what, what, like, I love schools like that that actually prepare you for an actual career. It's not as broad as a lot of other mm -hmm. education institutions. So what are your subjects like that you know that you really do value and use now in your career? Are you talking in terms of uh, AFTA or DUT? No, 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 AFTA. Um, and DUT. For me, it was writing. Yeah. And um, 
The reason why I'm asking is because when I studied drama at art school, mm -hmm. we had subjects like ritual and mythology mm -hmm. that you, you don't realize, but later on you, you, it does yeah. have some be, use to you. Yeah. Because I'm an actress now, I'm mm. going to go back to duty. And for me, it, it, was, it, was, it was the voice classes we had, mm. it was the monologue classes we had, and it was the movement classes we had that I really am using now, yeah. which I didn't know that would come into yeah. to be so important in, sure. in what I'm doing right now. So the role you're playing now is, the, mm. is your first on TV role. Yes. So what it, has it come with any surprises or has the world that it presents in terms of being recognizable mm -hmm. and people coming up to you and having expectations of you, mm -hmm. have there any, been any surprises along the way? I think what shocks me most of the time, because my character is very bubbly all the time. It's a fictional character. Nobody's that bubbly all the time. Wait yes. a minute. <laughs> Trust me. She is. <laughs> no, really. So when, when, when I go into maybe a mall, people expect me to be that way. First of all, they're oh. shocked that I can speak English. They're <laughs> shocked that I wear Brazilian weave. They're shocked at how I'm dressed. And they're shocked at just how I carry myself. I think that's, that's yeah. people expect you to be happy all the time and you can't be that way all the time. You know, that's been a shock to me. And not being able to just go out without taking pictures is really kind of a, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love we'll your get story. Used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love your story because it really is kind of a, a modern day rags to riches story mm -hmm. and, and you certainly deserve all the success that you're having. But I mean it doesn't come with its challenges and its hardships. I think what a lot of people don't know about you is at one point you were also homeless. Yes, I was. That was terrible. I can that, yeah. That was horrible. I think like I, sleeping on the street. Homeless. I was sleeping on the street, but it was just a, a brief, I think two or three days of really not knowing where I was gonna go yeah. with a little money in my pocket yeah. and I had to call a whole lot of my friends to kind of get them to figure out where I was going to sleep that night yeah. and look for a place for me. It was really that short space, but it was really bad. I don't want to ever go back to that place again. Yeah. 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 It's a, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's that any situation like that in our mm. lives that brings us to that like helplessness yeah. where you're like, my worst fears are possibly mm. all happening all at yeah. once. Right. Yeah. But what do you learn from, from journeys like that? What do you learn from journeys? I think, um, Everything has a challenge. I think sometimes we go into life thinking we are going to find some things easy. Mm. Everything has a challenge. Family has a challenge. Marriage has a challenge. Your career has a challenge. Mm. Your career path has a challenge. Everything has a challenge, and that's not to say we should give up. Yeah. Yeah. That's so beautiful because I think a lot of people would be broken down by that experience. Yeah. Um, and um, how did you get out of it? And how did you, I suppose, grow I, from it? I did because for a year it, it stuck with me. I remember even after I got I got cast on on my first show, I was supposed to be very happy, but I was crying. I just couldn't sleep. I was crying. I I couldn't get it out of mm -hmm. my mind. I think when I started going to church, I became a little bit better. The the, okay. the depression I went to became a little bit because it was yeah. such a big blow to yeah. me that even when I graduated the same year and I got onto a show the same year, I still wasn't very happy. I was mm. so sad because it was mm. such a big blow for me. Wow. wow. It's amazing, though, how one thing starts working out in your life and, and everything and, else know, around it kind yeah. of... Is it not maybe that thing where you've been strong for so long and when, when things finally go your way and somebody hugs you and you feel a bit of warmth, then you let go? So mm -hmm. it's like you only feel the thorns when you stop running. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you kind of let the floodgates open up and let go. I don't know. I, I re I'm really not sure what I was going through at that time. I think what I learned at that time is that anyone can abandon you. Because you, you, you go through life thinking, well, I've got maybe my mom, my dad, or my sister, and, 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 and I'm, I'm always going to be in my mm. comfort zone. But anyone can turn on you, yeah. really. What, what, what happened well, with your mom? Because I know you've recently reconciled with yes. her. Yes. We, we, we got into such a huge argument, a, a, a really bad argument. And, and, I, I, <laughs> and I think we both didn't handle it very well. Yeah. And I, I then took the decision that I was going to go. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not going to stay here anymore. And when I left, I didn't know where I was going, but I was just going to go. Yeah. But and you came back. Yes, actually. She must back. have been very happy. She was. <laughs> she still is. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad. I'm glad. I mean, it's, I think reconciling with people that we love is also, it's healing. Yeah, mm. it is healing. It takes, takes quite a while. And it takes the hand of God, but you get there eventually. Yeah. 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 And I believe that when you went to go and visit your mom, you also had a little surprise to show her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she hadn't seen my car yet, so I, I took I took I took it there to, for her to see it. Yeah. And That's she was so sweet. Yeah. Shame. She must be so proud of you. Um, does she watch your show? Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> so she now does. we heard that you have got a little crush 
on a certain soccer player, Didier Drogba. Yeah. He's amazing. That's like, he that's amazing. been years of, like, since 2008. Is that like your main him? crush? Like, it never goes away. No, that one will never go away. <laughs> it will never. I, I've got a physiotherapist, actually, and he was the physiotherapist to Didier Drogba. Really? <laughs> oh, so when he massages me, I'm like, yeah, so. <sighs> yes. Do you still have Didier's digits? Does he? <laughs> so, yeah. No. <laughs> will you pass We've me that a, gift? Um, on that note, a little surprise for you. Oh, my word. <laughs> there you go. It's a little prezzy. Do I open it now? Yeah, of course. Like, I think the audience would love to see. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Wait, wait. <laughs> there you go, that one. <laughs> called me the other day telling me that he'd gotten rid of his poem. You see, even my family knows how much I love him. Yeah. And, and this is, it's, are we prophesying maybe? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I think the married. two of you make quite a cute couple actually. <laughs> yeah. Two are so old now. So you want a guy to be a little bit mature. <laughs> yeah, with money and take him. Got money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It was so lovely having you on the show. <laughs> and best of luck with your career to come. Thank you so much for having awesome. me. <laughs> After the break, we're back in the kitchen with Chef Martin, the consulting partner for McDonald's South Africa, and he's going to show us how they make the newest item on their breakfast menu. Plus, it's time for another edition of Mommy Mondays, and today we're joined by dietitian Lisa Stander, who shares some tips on how to <laughs> deal with your kids when they're fussy eaters. With a trip to New York City worth 150,000 rand as first prize, Lancewood SA's number one cream cheese is so close to crowning the nation's number one cake. Recipes have been posted from every kitchen in the land. And come July 5th, celebrity judges Zola Nene, Jay Something and Lorna Maseku will host the three finalists in a live cake-off on SABC 3's Espresso Morning Show to decide who will bake it all the way to the Big Apple.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express, and we are back in the kitchen with the renowned chef, Ma chef Martin Cobalt. Now, earlier we got a taste of the classic Egg Mac Muffin, and now we are getting a taste of the newest item on the McDonald's menu, the breakfast wrap meal. What does the breakfast wrap meal comprise of? Well, it's it, 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 uh, a flat, uh, flat bread, mm -hmm. okay? Then, of course, we got some chicken roll. We got a beautiful, like, an egg type Omelette, sure. it's a beautiful fresh egg. Then we got a little bit of a bit of pie to it, a jalapeno sauce. That's fantastic, really, because nice. it gives it a little kick, you know, which you need this in the one. morning. That's so the it's one, like yeah. a jalapeno mayonnaise kind of thing. Correct, yeah, and it's, it's got a little bit of pie to it, which is great. And then we got the creamy white cheese, and then some beautiful tomatoes. Fantastic. And it gets toasted then, you know, we wrap it, and it gets yeah. toasted for for a minute or two, and then wrapped, and it's just so delicious to eat. Would you consider this the healthier option? Um. I think they're both fairly good, healthy mm. options to eat. Uh, of course, there you've got quite a lot of carbs, and then, of course, you've got the cheese with the protein, etc., mm. and you've got the mayonnaise there. So the, the Egg McMuffin is a little bit more the healthy option. you only got about 260 kilojoules. Okay. You sort of double that with that one. Okay. But, you know, you need that energy in the morning. You know, you need that exactly. breakfast stuff. You, you know? can eat the bulk of your calories for breakfast, Absolutely. I think. <laughs> As you mentioned earlier, it's the most important meal of the day. Yeah. And I 100% agree with it. So for all of our viewers at home, if they have never had a McDonald's breakfast, would which one would you recommend to them? I would, I would go with that one. I would definitely go with the breakfast wrap. Yeah. Uh, because it's just so much more. There's so much more in it. There's so many yeah. different flavors. The, the flavor that I mentioned is just an explosion in your mouth, and Amazing. it's just, it's just beautiful. I do love to ask chefs because I think they always have the best recommendations because you do love yeah. food. Okay. Now you're going to build yours. I'm going to build one. So there's 20, 20 mils of, of the jalapeno okay. Maya sauce. It's amazing how specific everything is. Like every single order will be exactly the same. And it is, it's, it's measured to the last detail. Measured to the last detail. You know, when, we, when we built it the other day at the, at the uh, McDonald's at head office yeah. in Johannesburg, you know, I said, oh, it's just about 20 millimeters. No, no not about, it's 20 milliliters yeah. of sauce, and that's so important uh, because of, of the standardization of the, of the yeah. menus throughout. So you got, the customer gets that experience in each and every store the same. Yeah. So that's the, it, it is, it is in very, oh, very great. important. Okay, and then a slice of, of, um, of the creamy cheese. Yeah. Okay, I'll put it in there. And then of course, we're gonna do, which one we should do? I think we'll do the tomato. <laughs> Let's slice the tomato. Okay. Okay, with the tomato. Yeah. And then we this take is my kind of cooking. Like, I can totally handle this. It's easy, isn't it? I said earlier that this is a difficult one, but it's actually very, very yeah. easy. And then, of course, the chicken roll. We also cut it in half. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, is the, 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 the yeah. A-grade fresh eggs, which we use in McDonald's. Yes. It is an egg, which is quite nicely done with, a like, an omelette omelet size. And then is the wrapping, you know? Yeah. Gets wrapped. Amazing. Okay, I'm going to start making mine because that looks so I good. I think so. Ah! So the I'm next excited. one's yours. Okay. Can I tell you what's going to happen? I can just imagine it. Everybody that's sitting at home now is like literally craving McDonald's right about now. Am I right? They're celebrating. <laughs> I, big can, time. They, I bet you they are because I know if I was watching right now, and I, I checked, definitely. You only would put be. 20 mils in there. I, I did double check. Now, yeah, so yeah, yeah. That so, was exactly 20 so mils. You could, yeah. I am a perfectionist. <laughs> Very good. But do you know what's going to happen now? Everybody who's watching this is now going to go to a McDonald's and they're going to want to buy something to eat. But now I have to ask you, as yeah. the expert, yeah. what is your favourite thing to eat on the McDonald's menu? <sighs> No. Not no, it's it's such a it's such a, a great menu. You know, I think I think if you ask me what I don't like to eat, what's my personal preference, it would be an easier answer. Okay, you know, what don't you it's, like? It's, I like everything. Now, I actually <laughs> do as well, so it's very difficult. It's um Preference wise or whatever yeah. the fish one. I'm not too happy with the fish because I'm not a fish lover Yeah, I don't really eat a lot of fish But as long there's some protein in there and there's long, you know, like lots of cheese and lots of lots yeah. of uh, chicken roll or like a betty or chicken betty It's me. That's me. You know as I said to you earlier body like this is not builded looking at the menu <laughs> You actually got to eat it as well, you know, <laughs> exactly. That's very important. Well, there you well, go. Well, you man, see I, I fail. I won't qualify to work at McDonald's. I kind of miss mine up. Great but it's job. fine. I'm gonna eat it anyway. Very nice. So that <laughs> actually so goes now into, into the toast and it gets yeah. toasted for a couple of minutes, so it's oh, a warm, okay. it's actually a warm meal. Oh, amazing. Yeah. You know what my guilty pleasure in life is? The fries. 
Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yes, yeah. Delicious. You're right. They, they're world renowned. They're yeah, beautiful. They are the best. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show Thank and for you. teaching me how to make this fabulous breakfast. Thank you. And tomorrow morning, straight to McDonald's. Oh, yeah, of course. Next time you are decide <laughs> next time that you are deciding on breakfast, take a moment for yourself and reboot the right way. If you are craving something classic, try the Egg McMuffin or try something new, the breakfast wrap meal. And remember, McDonald's can now be bought right to your doorstep for delicious convenience by the uh, Mac Delivery and Uber Eats app. I think it is for Uber Eats. <laughs> Yummy. Nutri Kids, good for mom, way better for kids. Made with love by Clover. Now, Nutri Kids believe in giving our little ones the nutrition that they need with a wonderful range of nutritional products for toddlers. A product that is truly good for mom, way better for kids. And joining us, we have dietitian Lisa Standard to discuss tips on how to deal with the little one's picky and fussy eating habits. Welcome back, Lisa. Thanks so much for having me. So I can always do with a bit of advice, and I'm sure every mom out there can too. I have two little boys. One eats every single thing. He loves tasting new food, trying new things. Mm -hmm. And the one is a very fussy eater. Mm -hmm. And I've often wondered, how do I get him to be less of a fussy eater? Because you just never know how to work around what they're going to eat, what they're not going to eat. How do you make sure that if they are going to eat it, it's the healthiest option of what they will have? It's a, such a myriad of drama. Just please advise us. <laughs> Sure. I imagine it to be a very tough thing. I have not. I don't have kids of my own yet, um, so I know my, all my advice isn't tried and tested. But this is advice that I've yeah. learned from other dietitians who do have kids as well. Yeah. And I think the first thing is just to keep the atmosphere as calm as possible, because mm. when we are faced with weird new foods. Um, and the atmosphere is tense because mom has prepared this food and now child and you must it. finish it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you must finish it and it's a mess. Then that atmosphere isn't really conducive to us trying, stepping out, out of a comfort zone and trying new, new foods. So keeping the atmosphere as calm as possible, I think, is always the first step. Right. And do you think fussy eats eaters with, with, when it comes to kids? And at what age does most of the fussy eating happen, actually? Well, kids are so different, all and different. it's so common to have a fussy eating stage, but when it actually happens varies quite yeah. widely. Some and kids start at one, other kids at six, and as we know, some people never outgrow Later. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is it a personality thing? Because, I mean, I, I, I often wonder, is there... Maybe some parent, parents, if you're paranoid like me, <laughs> you sometimes think, is my kid a fussy eater because they have issues around food or issues with food or... Has something happened psychologically that's affecting the way they view food? Mm. I think where the psychological aspect comes in is when meal times become stressful times. That's when children can't really step up and try new things. But if we then, it can also be maybe a personality thing, like a type A person that likes to have control. Mm. You want to exert that autonomy. That's a very specific um, phase in growing up. So there's definitely something to it, and which you can also kind of appreciate that they are stepping out and taking control of their food. But we need to also remind ourselves that this is a phase. This isn't forever. And children can actually stay very healthy and grow well, even if they only accept about 10 foods in their diet. Wow. That's a, that is quite phenomenal about children. I mean, mm. I know my children can just live on plain pasta. <laughs> right. How do we introduce healthier foods to our toddlers? First thing is they need to see mom and dad eating it themselves, mm. <laughs> which yeah. is often the challenge. Um, but also, a child can't accept a new food if they've only been exposed to it once. So when a child dislikes a food, it's so important to keep introducing keep it. Trying. Put it on the plate. Don't put too much pressure on them to eat it, but they, they're not allowed to leave it off their plate. It must be there and encourage them to interact with it, to squish it, to smell it, to even if they put it in their mouth and spit it out and make a huge mess, be chilled with it, it's fine. Sooner or later, they will accept it and start eating it. Basically, the best way to get your kids to eat anything is to be a calm <laughs> parent. <laughs> that is essentially what you're saying. Totally, Keep it calm. and accept the mess. Accept the mess, yeah. Embrace the mess. I've definitely learned to embrace the mess. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So with Clover Nutri Kids it's, kids, it's easy to please your fussy little ones at home with the range of tasty nutritional yogurts, instant full cream milk, and the three fun flavors of fruit nectar blend. Nutri Kids is set on providing a foundation of healthy development for toddlers as it contains essential nutrients and minerals. We'll be right back. Nutri Kids, good for mom, way better for kids. Made with love by Clover.
Meet the top 10 finalists for Presenter Search on 3. From Cape Town, Zikonam Da is an actress and voice artist with a passion for yoga and a love for animals. In high school, I discovered drama and I was like, that's what I want to do. Because I love to entertain people, I love to make people laugh, I like to make them smile, I like to make them feel good about themselves. My favorite movie is The Lion King. Remember who you are. Remember. I want to be a TV presenter because I want to get people talking, get people thinking, get them inspired, opening their minds and opening their hearts. Get a load of this. I am your brand spanking new presenter. Just last week, you saw me become one of three very lucky SABC3 presenter search winners. I think people want to see me on TV because I'm just like any other girl and I love a good time. I like to have fun. I come across as very serious, but I can be very, very silly. Good morning, it is time to rise and shine. However, if you're like me and you cannot get your day started without a good, strong cup of coffee, you are in for a treat. I spend my moments in between doing yoga or exercising. My favorite pose, I'd have to say, is a handstand because if you're feeling down and you really just need to get your spirits lifted, go into a handstand, you're ready to go. And that is how you do a handstand. Catch Presenter Search on 3, Thursday nights at 8.30 and watch the top 10 compete to become one of three new presenters on SABC3. The stage is yours. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're live on SABC3. Today we've been hanging out with two top South African TV stars, Pelelem Zimela and Dudu Zimaba. So welcome back to the couch. Welcome Fair. back. So an honest, I want an honest answer to this. If your <laughs> children came to you when you do eventually have children and said, I want to be in this industry, as the industry is in South Africa right now, would you say, big thumbs up, yes, do it? <laughs> uh, well, that's yeah. that answers that. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you know, it's yes. And why I'm saying yes is because uh, I think if um, I was um, Chuzela and then we are, we are, I'm surprised and I'm told. Yeah. So it's, it's fine. It's okay. It's good. As long as there was um, a good guideline, what to do, what not to do, and... Yeah, yeah. And you do have very, yeah. very cute yeah. children. They'll make great actors. <laughs> yeah. I think and if they really want to do it, then I'd allow it. But I'd obviously be there every step of the way watching everything. Yeah. Especially if they're female. Yeah. Oh, no, a stage everything. mom. Yes. That's I like have you, to watch you'd everything. be the momager. I'll be, <laughs> yes. Why is that? Like, have you had bad experiences? Not that I've had really bad experiences, but um, it's just always better if you have the support of your parent them watching everything that's happening because yeah. there's so many shocks in our industry mm -hmm. and it's always better to watch your kid and watch your kid from all these other vultures that are out there. There are a lot of shocks, yeah. yes. And it's also, I mean, it's an industry where you need a thick skin. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. need a mm. thick sure. skin. I'm like a rhino, an almost extinct yeah, rhino. Yeah, me too. I'm like a crocodile <laughs> and my skin's so thick. <laughs> I want to know from you because, I mean, you've literally, you've got the most amazing showreel and you've done mm. the most amazing films. Do you have a particular favourite and do you watch your own movies for pleasure? Yeah, I do watch my own work, and the reason why I'm watching my own work, uh, I criticize myself a lot. That's why I don't so, watch myself on TV all the time. Because so I just want acting. to grow. I just you want, want to grow. You know, yeah. out there, people they always say, "Yeah, hey, you're doing yeah. good. You're doing good." And sometimes they say you're doing good, even though you're not doing good. So yeah. I watch my work a lot, and that's the reason actually I'm watching my work a lot is because I, I want to criticize myself. So, which was your best? My best. Stick Fighter. Mm. Uh, it's a it's a 15 minutes movie. Uh, it was going for Sarajevo Festival, I think, 2006. Mm. Uh, I was not talking in the movie for 15 minutes. Wow. It was just acting. It was me and Terry Pet. Wow, so it was a very nice movie. Yeah. Yeah. Can I look at it online? Yeah, you can. You can. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, she's definitely going to be checking that out. Yeah, I know, but I mean, there's so much about you I'm just adoring right now. I'm like, oh, the shoes, your yeah. hat. <laughs> it's like, you could be a stylist as well as an actor. <laughs> no, it's because of my wife. My wife is a... Uh, yeah, because you watch your wife's manager as well. Yes, she's a designer. She styles me. Mm, yeah. I'm here. Well, I'm glad you're listening to oh, her because bad. she is classy and On she's got points. a lot of style. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> so what, what are your future plans in terms of acting? Where do you see yourself going? Where would you like this to carry you? I would one day like to play a villain. 
That's that's Ooh, my dream. Yeah, villains are the best. Yeah, always the mm -hmm. best. That's 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 the ultimate thing I'd love to do. I want to do more acting, and I wanna I want to have another role where I'm not always smiling all the time. I really want to play a villain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's just it. You've got such a beautiful, happy face. Yeah. I can't see you as yeah. a villain. I'm well, seeing you as the smile. But you know what? I'll say this. I, mm. think, I think happy characters do actually influence your life in a positive way. And I do, do think villains start to... They bring an aspect into your life that's quite dark, and you have mm -hmm. to fight harder to get out of that yeah. dark place. Yeah. I don't know if you, if you can relate to that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Because most of the time, people, they think you're dead uh, when you are just being yourself because yeah. when I want to they forget to, to, to leave their characters at work. Yeah. They take them outside. So people they think it okay, this guy's like this all yeah. the time. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for being on the show today and best of luck with, with what's to come. Thank, Thank you so very much. much for being here. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow at four thirty on S A B C three. Good night. Till then. Good night. <laughs>